Hey everyone, it's me HawkeyeG and I'm back with another video for you. This time I'm giving some starter campaign tips for the Ancestral Throng in Total War Warhammer 3's Immortal Empires campaign. The idea here is to hit some of the key points I found useful in this campaign to help you better plan and prepare for your own. This means I'll be talking about any battle or campaign related tips that I think will come into play in most campaigns and explain why they have worked for me. So without further delay, let's get into the video. So my first tip here is to capture your first province and then kind of play it safe and slowly. Odds are Malekith is bigger and stronger than you, and you also have the threat of Valkia plus the Norskins to the north. I technically haven't met the Norska yet on this campaign, but as you can see, Malekith Ethun with a small number of settlements is a very serious threat, and as the dwarves, a lot of your power does come and start to snowball later on once you've gotten your provinces better developed and have more income. Plus, with the way that anti-player bias seems to be working in Game 3, there's actually a good chance that if Malekith or Valkia get too big, they'll go to war with one another early on instead. This gives you the opportunity to take advantage and push against whichever one of them is weaker or ambush the one who has the advantage and disrupt it, um, but it gives you some options. You don't want to expand too fast early on. The next tip I have is, once you're ready to move out, bring some extra Quarrelers. Going up against the Dark Elves, you'll end up fighting a lot of Dark Shards and Shades. In my campaign specifically, I ended up running into Malekith several times with 6-8 to eight Shades in his army, and it's pretty bad. I think the best response to this in the early game as Grumbrindle is just to bring more ranged units of your own. I've got kind of a 50-50 split here, but I'd actually eliminate you know another 4 or 5 melee units and put them all into Quarrelers. The main reason being that your Quarrelers will outrange their Shades. While your Quarrelers have 160 range, even though I can't find an army with them right now, the enemy Shades would have 130 range. Of course, both Dark Shards and Shades are going to have armor piercing, so they're a very serious threat to your army, whereas the Bleak Swords and Dread Spears aren't really going to be as much of a problem for your Dwarf Warriors or your Quarrelers. Now, the Shades will get off a pretty decent, you know, Alpha Strike while they're still in stock, but as soon as they come out of that, having your Quarrelers properly focus fire them down two or three at a time is going to really turn the tide of battle in your favor. You can even try to rush them with your Dwarf Warriors, but that's, that's kind of the reason I suggest bringing extra quarrelers is ask yourself what alternatives you have available to you we could get artillery but since we're in a kind of a tough province and a bit of a slow start and we have to address this problem right away with a weak economy artillery might not be the solution plus the shades have stock so we won't get that maximum value out of the artillery the other alternative would be either cavalry or fast melee infantry and the best we can do as dwarves is bringing some slayers I think a couple of slayers in an army is good to have and their speed would be decent but that's not going to be the best solution to this problem that you're going to have fighting shades from the dark elves so i i think that you want to go a little heavier on corollars in a campaign like this than you would in most other dwarf campaigns now for tip number three i think it's a good note to avoid the ogres here in the south the iron mountains and racto gorge when you're ready it's obviously a good idea to wipe out the skaven prevent them from you know continuing to cause issues and taking racto gorge i used it as a sack target early on however you might take racto gorge and go huh you know this minor faction ogres with a single settlement i bet i could probably beat them and I bet you can too, but what we can't see is right down here in Storag Core, this is where Torox, the Brass Bull, has his homeland, and he's definitely going to have a herdstone there, and we can even see that this is in range, it's a blood ground for that herdstone at Shroktak Mount. So if or when you do take Rakto Gorge, consider not going south to Shroktak Mount. Sometimes the ogres declare war on you and you have no real choice but to fight them so that they don't threaten your other settlements. Um, but if you can help it, don't go to war with them because it will just open you up to Torox and then that's kind of, you're, you, if you're going to have to go down here to eliminate Torox, that's going to leave you very vulnerable on the front, especially if the Dark Elves and potentially Valkia are both at war with you. Now the next tip I want to suggest is if you have the opportunity and possibility to do something like this, if you happen to be at war with Valkia and Nagarond, or if they start getting into war with one another or kind of develop some problems of their own and you have some time, I actually think it might be worthwhile to kind of go on a tour of this northern province and just wipe it all out. The thing is that as long as Valkia and the Norska hold this territory, they always kind of have this open flank, and I don't know that you, I don't want to build walls in all three of these settlements if I can help it, right? If I can leave it, even one settlement open gives me opportunity to put some alternative buildings in there. So what I suggest doing 
if you have the opportunity and Valkia is already at war with you anyway, that you go through here and you loot and occupy your way through these settlements, then abandon them after the fact. You can go through here, make a decent amount of money and experience from combat and from looting and occupying, and then you make a little bit more money when you abandon the settlement, but that way when you loot and occupy it, you'll still recover instead of taking attrition in the high chaos slash frozen wasteland areas. It'll give you another opportunity to move a space towards the next settlement safely and make some further recovery and kind of wipe them out. That way you can really, like you can really strengthen one of your flanks that way by weakening the enemy significantly. It's not really that far of a loop to kind of come back to Dagrax end and then down here through Ashrak. And even if you just want to kind of cut through these settlements and go straight for the Dark Elves, I do think that it's better to take them out first. But if you have what looks like an opportunity where everybody else is busy, if you're already at war with Valkia and the Hmong, that's something that I recommend doing to take the pressure off of you and eliminating a flank. Now, if you are finding these tips helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. You know the drill just like any other YouTube video. If you've got any questions so far, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And if there's any tips you think I missed so far in this video, let me know that as well. Now, once you get a little further in your campaign, there's a couple more tips I want to share. The first one is don't invest too heavily in the Iron Mountains province. Regardless of whether you capture this early on and take out the ogres, or if you don't capture it until a little later on when you've dealt with the Dark Elves, you still shouldn't really invest in it until you have a good surplus of money and you've already done everything you can in other provinces. When you've taken out the Dark Elves, you'll have a very valuable province in the Black Flood here. You're going to want to make sure to develop this early, partly because it's going to be on your frontiers, but also partly because of the landmark building in Haggrave. And I mean, this is a three slot settlement compared to two. It's going to naturally develop faster, so that's better for you. Plus, it has the port, which can make you some money and a little growth. Even the settlement of Nagarond is going to be better because it also has a port and it has a trade resource that you can develop as opposed to no port and no trade resource. Furthermore, even early on in the game, when you probably haven't taken Grand yet or whatever phase of the campaign you're at, you still kind of want to save some money for this province because this is also going to be a very valuable province with the gold mine plus four settlements. It'll again develop very quickly. So even if you could be investing in and expanding the Iron Mountains province, you might still want to save a little money for the future for when you do eventually capture Grand. It's just a little tip. It's really easy to look at this and go, okay, why? Well, start I take Altar of Ultimate Darkness, move straight down into Rakdo Gorge and Shroktak Mount, um, but I just don't think that that is the best way to go about this campaign. You're going to end up investing a lot of money into something that is ultimately going to slow you down relative to just pushing through and trying to take out the Dark Elves entirely and take their settlements instead. Then my last tip for this campaign is try your best to befriend the Tomb Kings. It's not really an easy option to manage until you get a little further into the campaign, but it should be the relatively obvious here that the Tomb Kings are your best bet for an ally here. You're not anywhere near the range of fellow dwarves, you don't really have any human or maybe even lizardmen allies available to you, and although you'll probably befriend a Lithanar early on in the campaign, you do have that high elf grudge to settle. The problem is the Tomb Kings won't want to be your friends unless you have sufficient trade resources and sufficient power. And in my campaigns, they've actually managed to do really well in terms of power. And so it's been hard to kind of get to that level. You really are going to have to reach a point where your campaign stabilizes, levels out a little bit, and you can persuade them. Uh, however, if you leave them alone, they should leave you alone. And eventually you'll end up earning their respect and you'll build up and become stronger. Once you get things kind of solidified, you got a nice little like three-way non-aggression. Well, at least you have non-aggression with, with the High Elves and the Tomb Kings here. And uh, you just have a really stable background here from which you can launch your campaign and conquer the rest of the world if you so desire. So with that being said, that covers everything I wanted to for this video. Some of the, some of the things you'd be thinking about looking forward are having to deal with Sigvald and his forces to the east. You're also probably going to want to go to war with the High Elves in order to get rid of that grudge, but there's a good chance that they convert some of these trade agreements into defensive agreements pretty early on. But like I said, if you can reach this point, you have a good ally in the Tomb Kings, you have an extremely stable and powerful base to work from, you have a strong economy, and you're going to have all the tools you need to succeed in the rest of the campaign as you play it out. So I hope that these tips help give you a better idea of what to look for and focus on in your own campaigns and that you learned a thing or two along the way. 
This is another really interesting campaign. I've actually been very excited to play Grom Brindle's campaign because it's very different. They flung him to the opposite side of the world instead of, you know, fighting over the Badlands like every other dwarf in the game seems to do. So it's been a very unique campaign. It's forced me to think about some of the different approaches that you can take to the game as dwarves, especially depending on the enemies you're going up against. And of course, it brings a whole host of grudges that we need to settle. So if you did enjoy the video, remember to like and subscribe so you can stay updated. If you have any tips of your own or any any questions about anything I said, leave them in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching, have a great day, and we'll see you on the next one.